Pastor Paul, so we kind of started and diverged. We were on the subject of <clears throat> positive examples within the Christian community of engagement, you know, beyond maybe what we're doing. Uh, but you could speak to that, or you could speak to any of the other stuff that we've been sharing as well. Well, I, I agree with uh, my brother Dave that what he mentioned, that at the beginning, uh, we need to be, frankly, we need, to, we need to tell them that we are the follower of Isa al-Masih, we are the follower of Jesus Christ, and we want to share the truth and the gospel uh, with you, so to the Muslim friends. So when we go to the Muslim friends, I think at the beginning we have to tell them, frankly, what we want to do and what we are, who we are and what we want to do. Otherwise, uh, they may think that um, we are hiding something and that really creates some, uh, so many suspicions in their mind. Why this guy is coming to us and maybe they want to convert us, something like that. So at the beginning, I tell them that I am a Christian, I am a follower of Jesus. Of course, I do not use the word Christian. I say I am the follower of Isa al-Masih. And when I say, the moment when I say I am the follower of Isa al-Masih, oh, Isa al-Masih, he is our prophet. So that opens the door for me. So why don't you use the word Christian? Uh, you, uh, you know that in the Western world, actually the word Christian has been politicized. And when I say I am a Christian, Muslim will think immediately these Christians are the Western world is a Christian world, they think in that way. Also, in fact, it is not. Not many Western countries are Christian country. In fact, America is not a Christian country even. So, it is a very secular country. So, many Muslims have a wrong speculation that all the Western world, all the Western countries are Christians. And when they are involved, especially America is involved with any Middle East country, any Muslim country, that affects their mind. These are the Christians are fighting with the Muslim. And that reminds them the past history of the crusade. So, that is why I try to avoid that word. And uh, when I say I am a follower of Jesus Christ, I am a follower of Isa al-Masih, uh, they feel more comfortable. Even when I visit my Muslim friends, their house, many people sometimes they ask me to pray. And I tell them and I show from the scriptures, scriptures prove John 14, 14, that Jesus said, if you pray to me and if you ask me in my name, it will be granted. I said, I will pray in the name of Jesus. Will you agree with that? They said, yes, no problem. You can go ahead and pray in the name of Jesus. So, at the beginning, we should be frank and we should be tell them to, frankly. We should not hide anything and I do that. Even among the South Asian circles, uh, South Asian Christians are very few in number here in greater Boston area compared to the Muslims and Hindus. But I encourage the South Asian Christians, uh, if you want to engage with Muslims or Hindus or anybody, you have to be frankly said that no matter uh, how many numbers we are, no matter how minority we are. So, we have to tell them our uh, identity that we are the follower of Christ. It's good. It's good. I'm looking at the clock and I know we're kind of coming down toward the end of our time together. So I want to, I wanna, there's one important question I'd like to get a brief response from each of you, and we have about five minutes or so, and it would be this, um, you know, the main purpose of this video uh, is aimed at helping Christians to build friendships and relate, trusting relationship with Muslims, but I'm also aware, because this will be put out in a public forum, that it's possible that some of our Muslim neighbors and friends may happen upon this. And if they, if they did, who, uh, some Muslim friends who stumble upon this, what, what, what would you say to them if, if, if they do? And we'll start with Dave and just kind of go around. No. Okay, thanks, Greg. Well, the first thing I would say was, Salaam Alaikum wa Rahmatullah wa Barakatuh. Uh, we're happy uh, that you can uh, be with us and join us to see this presentation. Uh, I think the other thing that I would say is, Yad Wahda Ma Testaftqash. What does that mean? It means one hand doesn't clap. One hand doesn't clap, meaning what? Well, we can't do this by ourselves. It takes two communities to build bridges and to be involved in relationship. And so um, that really is our desire, is to, is to build bridges and to have positive relationships between our communities. I think we have to admit that um, there are those uh, who are in perhaps what we could call a parallel movement 
uh, of demonization. Mm -hmm. And they want to destroy uh, the building of peace and understanding that we are trying to build upon. Um, some leaders in, uh, in each community, I think we would, it would be fair to say, wish to portray the other community as the enemy. And, um, and I think this has become even more common uh, since 9-11. So uh, I think we have an obligation uh, to balance these negative voices uh, by our joint efforts so that together we can make this world a, a better pr place to live, inshallah, God willing. Yeah, that's great. Nathan? Uh, a couple of things, I guess, briefly. Um, um, I, I would say that um, with regard to this uh, video, and it's kind of been mentioned several times here, um, that lo love is the great Christian prerogative. And I think with, with that comes um, ethics. And uh, I, think, I think I would hope that um, Muslims who are encountering this conversation are getting a, a sense of not just the words that we are saying, but the atmosphere and the tone that it's taking and that we're trying to be honest to who we are as Jesus followers and, and what we're trying to do as we engage with, with our Muslim friends and with Muslim communities here in the States. Um, I'd also say along the lines of what David has mentioned, um, especially to Muslims in America, um, I think that um, in large part, there are, this is not characteristic of everyone, but um, much of the American Christian community, American evangelicalism in particular, um, needs to ask for their forgiveness because of late in particular, um, there, there are all kinds of mischaracterizations, demonizations, um, um, outright mistreatment, and uh, it's no way to treat the stranger among you. For sure, that's not the pattern of Jesus, not the, not the pattern of Christian teaching with regard to the foreigner and the stranger and, and, and the alien among you. Um, and so I would say that as well to my Muslim friends in America. And then to Muslims in the Muslim majority world, um, I think, um, you know, in line with what, what, what Paul mentioned, um, I would rem rem remind them that a um, you know, Christian is a uh, that Jesus follower is a sort of a preferred <laughs> nomenclature here for these kind of, for for us kinds of Christians. We're really trying to we're really trying to follow the teachings and the pattern of Jesus um, in every way, and in particular our relations with uh, with Muslims. And so, whatever um, a a Muslim from a Muslim majority country thinks about the language of Christian, what a Christian is, what a Christian is not. Um, judge us on how well we, we are attempting to follow Jesus. Yeah. yeah, Pastor Paul, I see the clock. We just literally have a few seconds. So if you just have something, a couple of seconds, you would like to say to a Muslim that might stumble upon this. Thank you. So if we look at the history, the Muslim not only misunderstood the Christian doctrines, but Christian major doctrines also misinterpreted to the Muslims. So if my Muslim friends uh, will ask me that what is the purpose of the video, so you are trying to convert us or something like that. No, I would say to them, no, it is not. So we want to overcome all this misunderstanding. So you, we have some misunderstanding, you have some misunderstanding. So let's come to the common ground and then have a conversation with that. So main purpose of video is like that. That's great, that's great. So thank you guys so much. Uh, in the next segment, we're going to look at some of the more challenging uh, areas, the barriers for Christians engaging with Muslims, and we'll pick that up in the next segment. Thank you.